I'm Jamie, Dalton's brother. I'm crew chief slash engine dude. I just make the car run and drive. So I know this is not really in y'all in the stock car realm of engines, but it, you can basically apply it to most anything, right? So <clears throat> what we have here is a stock six liter LQ9 engine that I had laying around and a customer wanted built for his uh, kind of like a resto mod um, C10. He chopped the rear frame on it and <clears throat> put a short bed on it, all that good stuff. Sorry, I had to get this camera adjusted. <clears throat> so putting rings on, I mean, if you know how, you know how. But for those of you that don't know how, I'll show you just real quick tricks. Gloves are not a must, but they do help keep everything clean and ready for assembly. Okay, so when you get them from the machine shop and they have them cleaned and all that, they look like that. Caps are all down there. Just take the cap off. On the LS, the cap bolts are an 11 millimeter. Okay, and these are crack, what, they, what they call crack rods or hyper eutectic rods. So that in the forging, they actually either cast that way to where when they're ready to take apart, put the bearings in, they actually they set it in their machine and they crack the rod off in that specific spot. That's why they call them crack rods. <clears throat> so your oil ring is this one, very bottom oil ring groove. And you wanna alternate each one of the openings that you'll have. So you'll slide it on there like this. What I do is I use my thumb to hold one side kind of in there, not a lot of pressure at all and then stretch it around, put it to the other side just like that. Make sure it's that on that side. And then I flip the piston over <clears throat> and I grab my oil rings, my smaller oil rings. These are the ones that keep that one in place and they slightly do a scraping job and just keep the oil regulated well like it's supposed to. These are the really, really thin ones. So same basic procedure. That's the same thing I do all the time. I set it in there, just hold it on one on bottom, one on top, and I just kind of peel it around. This one's going on the bottom. So that's right in there. I don't know if y'all can see that very well. I'll try and get a little bit better picture of it. Once you get that one on, same thing. Flip the piston over. I set it in there. This one's going on top. In there, and then I just work it around. These are very flimsy, so be careful with them. Okay, here's where it gets a little bit more specific. A lot of people, you know, for over the years I've heard that the top ring goes, uh, opening goes toward the bottom. That dot faces the front of the engine every time. So we're working on the passenger side. So this dot goes this direction. So this side in relation to me is gonna be the bottom of the piston. My own personal preference and a lot of other people, engine builders and such, they put the second ring opening towards the bottom. On any ring you get, you'll see how, you see how it's kind of slanted right there? That's to capture gases to make it seal. It'll spread out and seal. And on any ring that you get, most any ring that you get, you'll see, I don't know if you can see a little small lettering up here, it says top. They'll be marked top on the second ring. LS's, it's the only, the second ring is the only one that's marked. So top goes towards the top of the piston. So same thing, these are a little bit harder to do. I hold it in there with a little bit of force. I take this finger, push out, and this one or my pinky, hold this one right there, and I just lightly push down around it while I'm pushing on that side and it slides right in just like that right there. <clears throat> Top ring, same thing. Flip the piston over. So if it's that way, if it's put into the block that way, this would be the top, okay? So same thing. I hold it with a little bit of pressure with my thumb on this side, like this, and then I push with this side and push down with one of my other fingers. Slides right on. It's that simple. Now, when you are about to assemble these things, 
Uh, we'll get to that here in a minute, but there's ways I like to oil them. I use uh, a heavy weight gear oil just because that's what I like using. There are other things that I use on more important things that in my own personal opinion. This is a pretty decent product. You can get it at uh, O'Reilly's, AutoZone, Advance, any parts store, Napa probably has it too. I think they're about 20 bucks for a bottle. It's really, really, really thick. It's almost thicker than honey and it sticks to everything. Hands, feet, gloves, everything. But this is the actual assembly lube that most people use or they use this plus mixed with, you know, a break-in oil or a 530 or a 1030 or whatever. But I don't necessarily like using these, especially in this, especially in this environment that I'm in right now, because this is a startup. I'm, I'm starting to build these engines for Nordic racing engines. What's, it's what I'm calling it. <laughs> so, I don't like using it because there's a lot of dust in the air. I cover the engines, but you know, you have to mitigate it as best you can. This is extremely sticky. If air could stick to it, it would, <clears throat> but that's why I don't use it on, uh, on assembly. All right, we're back again. I'm going to show you how I oil these things up to get them ready to go in the hole. <clears throat> so I just use regular oil. Uh, this one's 7590 gear oil. So what I do is I start in here, right in here where the piston wrist pin is. I go in between there, slide it over to the other side, in between there. That way it's not dry on startup. I get the skirt, I spread a little on the rings, flip it over, do the other skirt, and a little bit on the rings. And flip it over, make sure the bearing is clean. I cleaned it beforehand. And just get you a little dabble in there, just one little streak across there. And then make sure your orientation is right. So dot to the front of the engine. And I just make sure my rings are good. Slide it down in the hole. And it'll sit right there. Nothing wrong with it. This you can get at any auto parts store i think you're like when i bought it it was like 25 dollars or some such it comes with this and this little wrench for that side so i get it in there i set it on top you know you see how this is oriented the rings lower down on here the compression ring that's how it's made so make sure that ring is lowest down onto the piston and the best place where i found it is right about here I'll pick this up and show you real quick. Right about there is the clocking for this little doohickey right here where it tightens it. Somewhere in this area seems to work the best whenever you're trying to put it down into the hole, into your cylinder. Okay, so I got that down there. Press down with a little bit of force, nothing just absolutely crazy. You'll hear it kind of click, and then whenever you get to where it's kind of tight, just kind of bounce it a little bit. Make sure you get that little click, and you know, make sure it's good there. My camera, camera kind of moved around, sorry about that. So, once you're there, springs are compressed. You take any soft, soft mallet or whatever, end of a hammer, and Snap-on has these actual piston hammers that you can do the same thing with and just whack, whack. I've been doing it so long with the butt of a hammer, it just seems more com comfortable for me, but you know, use whatever you want to use. So the way I do it is I reach up in here, I find my rod, I make sure I kind of guide it with my finger. I just tap down in there. You see how that let loose? Piston is down in a hole. Okay? So you just set this off to the side somewhere. And guide your piston. You'll just tap, tap, tap. Down into the slot. You know, it'll kind of guide itself on there. Just make sure. Make sure that's where it's at. And you'll 
got it onto the crankshaft. You'll hear that different kind of sound thud I think y'all heard. And you come around here and that's where she sits. Right there. Okay. And that's how I put pistons in. It's worked for me pretty well. And yeah, that's about it right now. I'll show you some more stuff as I keep going.